Meredith here from Sew Liberated, and today I'm going to show you how to sew the Penny Pinafore. The Penny Pinafore is a really fun apron dress pattern with crisscross straps and a gathered back. So let's get started. Before beginning your Penny Pinafore, make sure to mark the right side of your fabric, especially if, like me, you're using a fabric that does not have a clear right and wrong side. Because this is sewn with French seams, it's really important to know which side is which. Fold the waist tie piece in half lengthwise, right sides together. Sew the long edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Turn the tube right side out and press, and then tuck one short end inside the tube a quarter inch and press again. Edge stitch the long seamed edge and the folded end of the waist tie. Next, we're going to sew the shoulder straps. Place two strap pieces together, right sides facing, and pin them. Sew along both long sides with a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat for the second strap. Press the seam allowances open to help the strap turn right side out neatly. Turn the straps right side out and press again. Top stitch along the long edges with a quarter inch seam allowance. Repeat for the second strap. Next, we are going to prepare the pockets. In this video, I pressed and pinned the pleats in my pockets before sewing them but you can pin and secure them as you sew if you prefer. Sew across the bottom of the pocket at a scant 5 8 inch, making sure to catch the pleats as you go. 
then sew across the top of the pocket at a quarter inch, also making sure to secure the pleats. Repeat this for the other pocket, making sure that you have a mirrored pair. Press the 5 8 inch seam allowance of the bottom up towards the wrong side of the pocket using your stitching line as a guide. Fold the top edge of the pocket down a quarter inch towards the wrong side. Fold the top edge of the pocket towards the wrong side again using the notch as a guide and press. Edge stitch this top edge and the hem edge in place to secure the pleats. Repeat these steps for the second pocket, making sure once again that the pleats are mirrored. Baste the pockets in place on the side panels, aligning the notches using a half inch seam allowance. Sew so the bottom of the pockets in place with an edge stitch. Set the side panels aside. Now we're going to insert the godets. This is where marking the right and wrong side of your fabric will really come in handy. With wrong sides together, lining up the notches, pin the godet to the back panel. You will be sewing this seam from the bottom to the top notch, so make sure that you mark clearly where to stop your sewing. I used a brightly colored pin to mark where to begin my sewing. I would recommend a step like this. Sew from the top notch to the bottom edge at a quarter inch seam allowance. Clip into the seam allowance at a quarter inch at the top notch through both layers. Press your seam allowance open along the stitching line, but not above it. Check for stray threads and make sure to clip them because they can peek through your French seam. Fold the pieces over so the right sides are facing and the seam is right on the folded edge. Make sure that the seam allowance above the clip notches are free from the seam. Press in place carefully. Sew only from the notches at the top of the godet to the hem using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Press the seam allowance flat to neaten it and then press the seam allowance towards the godet. From the notches to the waistline, the seam allowance will still be unfinished and flat. Repeat for the other godet.
With wrong sides facing, pin one of the side panels to the back panel, lining up the notches. I like to pin from the center out, starting at the top of my godet down and then back up to the top of the back panel. Sew so, using a quarter inch seam allowance. Press the seam allowance open and once again trim any stray threads from the seam allowance. Fold the pieces over so the right sides are facing and the seam is right on the folded edge. Sew again using a 3 8 inch seam allowance and taking care that the top edge of the godet is neatly enclosed in the seam. Press this seam allowance towards the center back. Repeat these steps to attach the second side panel to the back panel. This assembly is now referred to as the back. You can now remove the basting stitches from your pocket, and you can see how neatly enclosed the French seam is from either side. Next, we're going to sew the back casing and insert the waist ties. You'll press the short end of the back casing 5 eighths of an inch to the wrong side, and one of the long sides 5 eighths of an inch to the wrong side. On the waist edge of the back, there are notches for the shoulder straps. Line up the unnotched end of one shoulder strap between the notches on the wrong side of the back and pin in place. Pin it with two pins with the pin heads extending past the seam allowance to prevent losing one in between the layers. Pin the second shoulder strap in place in the same way. With the right side of the back casing facing the wrong side of the back and the unfolded short end of the side seam, pin the back casings to the waist seam of the back. You'll be enclosing the shoulder straps in this seam.
Sew using a 5 8 inch seam allowance. Press the seam allowances down towards the skirt and the back casing up. Understitch the seam allowances to the back casing. I prefer to stitch from this side, which is the wrong side of my piece because I can see the seam allowance and use it as a guide for my stitching line. Trim your seam allowances to a quarter inch. Fold the back casing around to the right side of the back and press them neatly in place. I've used pins to secure my casing, but you could also use wonder tape if you prefer. Edge stitch the folded edge of the back casing to the back, forming the channels for the waist ties to pass through. There will be a gap between the two folded under short ends of the casing at the center back. This will leave some space for the ties to emerge. Using a safety pin or a hook ended tube turner, draw a waist tie through the channel starting at the center back opening until the raw edge of the tie is even with the seam allowance. Baste it securely in place using a quarter inch seam allowance and repeat for the second waist tie. Stay stitch the curved armhole edges of the front and the front facing half an inch from the raw edge. With wrong sides facing, pin one side of the front to the back at the side seams lining up the notches. The top edge of your front piece will overhang the casing.
don't worry about this bit that overhangs because it will be enclosed once we sew the facings on. It should be about 5 eighths of an inch. We'll be sewing from the bottom of the casing to the hem. I like to put a brightly colored pin there to mark where I'm going to start my stitching. I know this seems unusual or awkward, but don't worry about it. Just have faith and it will work out. Sew using a quarter inch seam allowance from right below the back casing to the hem. At the top of your stitching, clip into your seam allowance a quarter inch. Trim any stray threads from your seam allowance and press your seam allowance open. Fold the pieces over so that the right sides are facing and the seam is right on the folded edge. The back casing will stick out of the folded edge. The raw edge will be covered in the front facing later. Sew again, this time the entire seam from waist to hem using a 3 8 inch seam allowance. Take care to enclose the entire raw edge. Press the seam allowance flat to neaten it and then press towards the center back and repeat these steps for the second side seam. On the long, curvy edge of the front facing, stitch a scant quarter inch from the raw edge. Press the edge under towards the wrong side a quarter inch using your stitching line as a guide. If your fabric frays easily, you can also edge stitch along this folded curved edge. Crossing the straps over, but being careful not to twist them, pin the other edges to the top edge of the front bib, 5 eighths of an inch in from the raw edge and lining up the notches. It is easiest to do this step with your garment turned inside out. Baste the straps in place using a half inch seam allowance. Press the side seam edges of the front facing half an inch to the wrong side. With the right sides together, pin the front facing to the front, lining up the edges carefully.
Sew along the top three edges of the front facing from side seam to side seam, catching the basted ends of the straps in the seam as you go and pivoting neatly at the top of the corners of the front bib. Once you've secured your seam, carefully clip the seam allowances of the side curves of the front. Turn the front bib and facing assembly right side out and press well. From about two inches away from the corner of the front bib to the side seam, understitch the seam allowance to the facing. Trim your understitched seam allowances to a quarter of an inch. Now we're gonna secure our facings and side seams. Press the whole seam, including the facing, towards the front. Then fold your facing over the side seam and secure in place with pins or wonder tape. Make sure that your facing hangs a little bit over that side seam so when you stitch in the ditch, you catch and secure it. Carefully stitch in the ditch to secure your facing. I used Wonder Tape and I put a couple of pins just to make sure nothing moved. You're sewing through a lot of layers here, the casing, the waist tie, the side seam, so go slowly and carefully. It's a good idea to back tack and even sew through it twice if you wanna be sure. Using a hand catch stitch, secure the front facing invisibly to the front bib. Stitch the raw edge of the hem at a scant 5 eighths of an inch. Press the hem 5 eighths of an inch to the wrong side using your stitching line as a guide and then press another 5 eighths of an inch to the wrong side enclosing the raw edges. Carefully edge stitch your hem in place. When you've finished stitching, give everything a good press and try it on. Thank you so much for following along with Penny Pinafore Sew Along. We hope you enjoyed it and hope you love your brand new. Yes.